With the election season coming up, what would it take to create a secure voting system? All right, here we go. Welcome to The Breakdown, where we analyze your startup ideas so you're better prepared for the road ahead. My name is Daniel Hindi, and today we're going to break down what does it take to create a secure voting system. So before you think this system is simple, let me start with an anecdote so I can better explain all the moving parts of a voting system. In a country run by a dictator, a man is making his way towards the voting booth to place a vote. Now, this is a dictatorship, so just there's a facade opposition. But the truth of the matter is, is everybody's expected to vote for the dictator. You look around, you can see all the propaganda. You could see the thugs in the street making sure everybody stays in line. And the man gets fed up with it. He says, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to vote for the opposition. He musters up the courage that he has, and he walks into that voting booth, votes for the opposition, plates the ballot in the box, and then walks out head high, chest all puffed up, makes it to his house, and tells his wife. He starts boasting, and he says, Honey, I just did something that we all should do. We should vote for the opposition. His wife, being worried for their health and the ramifications of what he's just done, said, Are you crazy? They're going to come after our children. They're going to come after your business. They're going to come after you. They'll, they'll kill you and they'll kill me too. Are you nuts? Go back. You have to go change your vote. So the man runs back to the voting booth. He says, I'm so sorry. I need to go in there. I need to change my vote. And the security guards on the booth said, hey, hold on, hold on. What's, what's wrong? He's like, I, I did something very stupid. I voted for the opposition. I need to change it back. I need to change it. Then the representative comes in from inside and says, oh, was that you? Don't worry about it. We fixed it for you. Now, I say this anecdote tongue in cheek, obviously, but it has all the moving parts of a real voting system. Now, I'm not saying voting Pepsi versus Coke. I'm saying where the vote uh, results actually matter. And so in these cases, you have more than just the voting process that needs to be secure, trusted and audited but it's all the human nature surrounding the voting experience from the pressures before you go to vote, to vote one way or the other, uh, to the pressures after you vote or maybe rewards, maybe you're being bribed to, uh, to vote one way or the other. And so there's a lot of human intervention that comes in based on your environment that is part of your system, whether we like it or not. So like always, we're going to begin with breaking down the technical challenges that you may have, go through a go-to-market strategy, and how would you actually make money on this system? Okay, so let me begin by explaining there's a difference between e-voting and i-voting. Electronic voting versus internet voting. Now, electronic voting has been around for quite some time. This is anytime you go vote and there's an actual machine in front of you that you, you press on its screen or a button on the side to make sure that uh, your vote is tallied in an electronic way. Now, that has its own vulnerabilities, and we've seen in the news multiple times how that can be hacked uh, and tampered with. But I want to take it one step further. I want to go to the Internet voting system. This is where you put something like this on an open network like the internet so people can vote from their mobile phones or, or maybe a, a kiosk device in front of you, but it's, it's an open network uh, and see how that works. Now, before I hear the objections in the comments, I know Estonia has done this. And Estonia is a very contained system that allows us to take a glimpse on what it would look like to create a system like this. So let's just make sure that the benefits outweigh the risk. Now, again, in this environment, you have two systems, a rational, logical system, which is the voting mechanism and an irrational system, which is the human machine. And humans will deal in an irrational sense. Again, I get this all the time around election years and, and people say, well, we, we do every, we bank online. If I trust my money, I can't trust my vote. There are different environmental uh, uh, differences between voting and banking. You know what your, where you spent your money and how much you'd be in your bank account. And if not, there's a ledger that you can go back and audit. And there's securities and checks and balances to make sure that that is there. But when you're dealing with a voting system, you have different requirements. The requirements must be anonymous voting, 
to make sure that there are no influencing voters on how they vote left or right, accurate tallying to make sure that your votes are counted correctly, trust in the system that not only is the mechanism bug free, if you will, so I can trust it to tally the vote, but tamper free that people can't go in and change it last minute. Understanding the system so that the trust of the voters are given to the system because it's hard to trust a black box where you don't know what's going on in the background, even though technically nowadays we do that all the time. When it comes to voting, we at least owe our voters, our citizens, the transparency of telling them how the system actually works. So the two tripping points in the system is the fact that the voting needs to be accurate and anonymous, which means if I make a mistake, I can't go back and say, hey, Freddie, what did you vote? Jane, what did you vote? Uh, Danny, what did you vote? And then tally them up, they're anonymous. So the auditing process needs to work in a way that keeps the voters uh, vote anonymous. And the second part is you need to earn the trust of your voters. Otherwise it'll just be called a facade vote and no confidence will be put in the system and, and the ramifications are dire. Imagine you have three candidates running for office, red, green, and blue party. And for these three candidates, we create a red bucket, blue bucket, green bucket, and people go in and just vote, and place their vote in the bucket that they want. Now, uh, think of this digitally. If I had a bucket, or in this case, call it a variable, a database entry, some digital bucket that houses the vote count. Now, if I want it to be anonymous, it's simple. You come in and you say, I want to vote for red. So I take whatever value is in red, initially zero, plus my vote, zero plus one equals one. And now red has one vote. The next time it comes in and, and people are voting in, it's just incrementing the value plus one. But we need to ensure that our data is acid. Our data has autonomy, consistency, isolation and durability. So at a simple level from a technology side, if two votes came in for the Green Party at the exact same time, what would happen if they both take a copy of what's in the green bucket at the same time, increment it by one and put it back, we just missed a vote. And imagine that at scale. Now, this is simple programming 101 that we've solved a long time ago. However, with a voting system, who says I increment by one? I may increment my vote by two. Who says that I don't just grab the bucket at the end and just change the number? Well, how do you solve this? Well, again, this has been solved with uh, systems like your bank account and accounting. You create something called a ledger. And a ledger says, I don't have a bucket that has a sum of all the votes. I have a trail of every vote when it came in uh, and, and where it went to red, green, or blue. And then I have a ledger that I can sum up and then say, this is the number of votes for red, green, and blue. Now again, who says I can't tamper with that final number? And who says that my tallying up isn't broken? So one way around this is you create a checksum system. A checksum system basically says, how can I reach the total number uh, of, of the votes for every bucket in multiple ways? And if I can reach it in multiple ways, that means if I take method one, two, or three, they should all add up to the same number. What do I mean? Let's say I took all the numbers, added them up, and found the red party got uh, 100 votes. Well, another way is also saying, how many red votes came from city A plus city B plus city C, add them all up, should be the same number as just doing a linear summation. You could also segment the data in many different ways, but when you finally add them all together, they all three, four, five, ten 10 methods should always add up to the exact same sum. And that gives you some validation that your summation process is correct. But again, who says at the very last second before I reveal the votes that I don't just change it. So there's trust in the system against tampering. Now remember, the entire ledger system in our system is completely anonymous. So I can't go back and audit person per person unless I come up with yet another mechanism. So a system that presents itself in modern day that, to help us with a ledger system that is uh, potentially anonymous uh, and secure and tamper-proof is the blockchain. 
Now, again, that's a very uh, trendy topic uh, nowadays. I'm go going to try to explain it uh, in an oversimplified way. So for those of you who work in the blockchain, please plug your ears right now. I'm just going to keep it super simple so we can move on. So the blockchain is one, a distributed network. There's no centralized server that you can go in and tamper at the very end. It also has redundancies within it, which means it has copies of the same data. If you tamper with one, the other one is still valid. And if you have multiple three, four, five copies of the same piece of data, then the one that's odd is obviously deemed invalid. Now, in this system, you can create new records but you can't update or delete. And the mechanism in blockchain, and again, oversimplifying, is assume the result of the first record is used as a password to encrypt the second record, and the second to the third, and the third to the fourth, and the fourth to the fifth. At any point, if you tamper with any one of the ledger entries, the whole chain becomes invalid. So it becomes a house of cards. You compromise one entry, the whole thing comes down. And because you have redundancies, you can rebuild it in a way that you know you have confidence in. So this sounds really great, but those of you who are still with me still say, well, yeah, okay, great. I understand the system is secure, but what happens, you still have the problem with, I can't audit it necessarily because it's all anonymous. And to whatever tally at the end, I can just say at that very last second, change it to something else. And you would be correct. Well, in terms of keeping the votes anonymous, what we could do is with every vote, we can give you a receipt with that vote, which we do right now in our paper ballots, where it doesn't identify you in particular, but it identifies that vote. So you can go back and check. I voted left, right, center, whatever it is. And I have a receipt for that vote where it went and what was it? So that the only thing tying me to this receipt is that I physically have it in my hand. So when you go and vote, it gives you a receipt number, you keep that receipt number with you and you can go back and check if that receipt numbers vote ever changes. Now in terms of compromising that final number, so you can have multiple voting systems and some could be blockchain, some could be something else, or they could all be independent blockchain networks. And once you place a vote, it goes to all five or however many voting systems you may have. And then they should all tally up the exact same number. And that would be correct. But we're forgetting about the irrational system that is the human condition that I brought up in the very beginning. Well, it's supposed to be anonymous and you shouldn't be able to bribe me for a vote. Well, if I took that paper receipt and I showed you, yes, I voted the way you wanted, you could still bribe me. And if I wanted to cast doubt in the trust of the multi-counting system, all I'd have to do is take one of those two systems and deliberately make it look flawed for the voters to say, well, obviously there's been tampering. This whole system doesn't work. And I, and I cast doubt on the entire voting system so I can invalidate the results and start all over again. Because remember, I don't actually have to tamper with the system directly and at scale. All I have to do is establish enough mistrust in the system for it to all become null and void. And all of this still doesn't deal with voter fraud, proxy voting, dead people voting, uh, fake votes, multiple votes being casted in where, hey, what if I got two, three ballots and entered them in? If all that ties me to those ballots are just a receipt number, who says I can't do that? So all of these nuances have solutions. It's not that they don't, but can you see how big the system is getting and how costly the system is getting? And when you're dealing with the government, who do you think is flipping the bill for that? You, the taxpayer. So at a certain point, like I said in the very beginning, the solution should outweigh the cost and the risk. So the conclusion comes down to two major points. Is the problem that you're solving bigger than the problem you are causing? It's extremely important to know that, that you don't want to swap out one problem with the other. Now, again, if you're dealing with elections, 
that don't have dire results. Uh, again, it's a popularity vote. It doesn't really matter anyway. Fine, these systems work absolutely fine, no problem. The level of confidence is sufficient enough. And the amount of desire of people to invalidate that voting system or to, to tamper with that voting system is probably low anyway because there's no real gain one way or the other, or the gain may be nominal. The second point is those particular requirements for a voting system initially, are those requirements still valid today? Does it need to remain anonymous when we all know it's not really anonymous? That receipt still proves if you voted one way or the other. And two, the amount of trust and understanding required for me to trust a system, is that still required? We put our information into online banking all the time. We take pictures of checks and deposit them. We use credit cards for everything and we don't really know how that works, but we still do it because there's enough repetition to know if there was something at least uh, overtly wrong, we would all be up in arms because there's nothing like messing with somebody's money. We trust Facebook and we trust Google and we trust Apple. And the truth of the matter is, is we don't know how any of that really works inside. And they have their private companies. They have intellectual property that they don't need to reveal to you. We still do it. We try to hold them accountable, but really we still give up so much of our information freely uh, online and trust these giant tech companies to be good custodians of our data. Go to market strategy. So it all depends on what your market is. Who is your addressable market? Are we going after governments or are we going after uh, companies having internal voting slash polling for uh, their employees? And so it depends on uh, what kind of market you want to enter, where you need to spend a lot of time educating and building trust as an authority in a voting system, or making it simple and easy to use and lowering the barrier to entry from cost and complexity to the general public so that they can put all their nominal votes into a system like yours. Now, in both cases, you're spending a lot of time educating the voters on why they should trust your system. But here's the thing, the more you educate them, the more you're potentially exposing vulnerabilities in your system. So you need to be conscious of that and see how do you build enough trust in your system. Uh, and again, for nominal things, you'll be surprised how people just come in completely trusting you and your mechanism. But when you're dealing with higher stakes, obviously uh, you need to be transparent on why your system should be trustworthy. Before we continue, make sure you like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content. And for those of you who like our videos, go ahead and download the Cogent Step app. It's a free business coaching app that helps you diagnose all the problems that you may have with your business. Monetization, how are you going to make money off this? Now, the biggest gamble is to try to get a government to purchase your system. Now, that is a big gamble because you only have a limited amount of uh, governments that are willing to pay you for your system, but the payout is great. Most systems like this are uh, coming out as white papers first, explaining how you would do them. The government would pay you and then you would build it. But it's a long process. You're putting all your eggs in one basket and it, if it pays off, you're going to do really well. But maybe there's something that's on a lower scale, on the business level scale. So the other way is to create a SaaS product, a software as a service, where remember, if you're using a blockchain type uh, mechanism for your voting ledger system, then it's decentralized, which means everybody downloading your app is technically participating in this voter network to make sure that it's decentralized. Uh, and, you know, companies who are looking to communicate with their customers and get them to vote on their roadmap, uh, maybe companies that want to communicate with their employees and have them vote on initiatives in the company or whatever it may be. People can come in, participate, pay you a monthly service fee to be able to engage in your voting system. And hopefully there's enough repeat voting that they'll continue to pay you on a monthly basis. Have a system you'd like me to break down? Download the Cogent Step app and leave it in the suggestion section. And the next video may just be yours. And that's another system broken down.